The movie opens with Adam and Barbara spending their vacation at home. Jane arrives and tells Barbara that she got an offer on their house, but Barbara turns her away. Adam opens the window in the basement but sees Jane peeking in, telling him about the offer. Adam tells her no and shuts the blinds. Adam asks Barbara to go to the store with him. The couple gets in their car and drives to town. They arrive at their hardware store, where Adam quickly gathers the supplies he needs. As they're driving back, Adam spots a dog on the road, forcing Barbara to swerve to the side. The car drops into the river with the couple still inside. Back at home, they sit close to the fireplace to warm themselves. The fire bursts for a moment. Barbara sees her fingers lit as if they were candles. She shakes the flames away, confused that it didn't even hurt. With no memory of how they got back to the house, Adam decides to trace his steps. He exits the house only to land on a strange desert with a giant sandworm closing in. Barbara pulls him back up the house, telling him that he'd been gone for two hours. Inside the house, Barbara shows him that they have no reflection in the mirror, e side table. Barbara concludes that they didn't survive the car crash. After the revelation, the couple turns to the book for answers. Instead of spiritual answers, the book bears technical instructions that confuse them. Barbara complains that there's no one to explain to them what's going on. Barbara gets frustrated at the book, but Adam suggests that they have nothing to worry about since they're dead. Jane has already sold their house. On the next day, the new homeowners arrived. Charlie, his wife Delia, and his daughter Lydia. Delia's mood lightens when her interior designer, Otho, arrives to help her renovate the house. Hearing the family's conversation downstairs, Adam plots a plan. Delia and Otho mock the house and mark areas to make changes. They open the closet in the bedroom and turn the light on. Inside, Barbara is hanging by her neck, then pulls off her skin to add to the scare. Delia and Otho do not see Barbara at all. They move on to the office, where Adam's headless body is on the floor. Barbara stands beside him, holding his head in one hand and a knife in the other. Again, the two don't see them. Charlie and Delia argue about the house, with Delia insisting on redecorating. Charlie gives up and asks to at least leave the office as it is. In the office, Barbara is tired of seeing the people invading their house. She heads to the back door and jumps into the desert. Adam follows her and spots the giant sandworm coming after them. The monster opens its mouth, but Barbara punches it on the nose. The couple goes back inside. On the next day, Barbara and Adam watch their house get torn apart. Delia commands the workers. Adam sifts through the handbook, hoping to find something that can help them. A piece of paper falls from the pages, advertising a bio-exorcist named Betelgeuse. In the kitchen, Charlie prepares his tea, but one of Delia's sculptures crashes onto the window. The sculpture then drops, cornering Delia onto a wall. Lydia freezes when she looks at the attic window. She gets distracted by Jane's car pulling up, and when she looks back to the windows, the figures are gone. Barbara is stunned that Lydia looked at them, but Adam doesn't believe that she saw them. Jane hands Lydia the skeleton key to open the attic. Lydia marches up the attic. The Maitlands rush to block the door, wanting the attic to be untouched. The TV in the attic switches on by itself, showing an advertisement with a man claiming to be Betelgeuse. When the advertisement is over, Adam plugs a stick into the keyhole, ejecting the skeleton key from the other side. Adam checks the handbook, remembering what to do if there's an emergency. He uses chalk to draw a door on the wall. Once Adam is done, he knocks on the door three times and waits. The bricks on the wall open up, pouring green light into the attic, which Lydia sees from the door. The couple holds hands as they enter the mysterious door. Later that day, Barbara and Adam enter a strange waiting room with even strangers sitting around. Adam knocks on the information desk, where the informant explains that they have to spend 125 years in their house on Earth and only get three sessions with their caseworker for help. Since they don't have an appointment, the informant tells them to wait like the rest. Lydia finally enters the attic. She sees the handbook and reads through it. The door opens and a flattened man calls Adam and Barbara. The couple heads inside and makes their way to search for the sixth door. They pass by a door to the lost soul's room, where all the exercise ghosts reside. Adam and Barbara find the sixth door and enter, finding a room with artistic furnishing. They realize that they're back home. Their caseworker, Juno, tells them that three months have passed. The couple explains that they're unhappy about how the Dietzes wrecked their home. Juno scolds them for not studying the manual, telling them that they can get the Dietzes out on their own. When Barbara mentions Betelgeuse, Juno stops her, warning her not to ask for his help. Betelgeuse used to be Juno's troublemaking assistant until he left to be a freelance bioexorcist. Rumors say that he's been living in the Maitland Cemetery recently and will only surface if someone says his name three times. Juno insists for the Maitlands to deal with the Dietzes on their own before disappearing. 
With no other options, Adam is determined to handle things by themselves. That evening, Charlie hears a moan from outside. He opens the door and sees a figure under a sheet. He scolds the figure, assuming that it's Lydia. In the master bedroom, the couple attempts to wake and scare Delia, but she simply turns the TV off before going back to sleep. The two exit the room, surprised to see Lydia taking photos of them in the hallway. Lydia thinks that it's her dad and stepmother. When she checks the Polaroids, she sees that there are no feet under the sheets. She confronts them but instead of being scared, she's curious. Adam and Barbara take off the sheets. Adam questions why Lydia can see them, but the others can't. Lydia figures that it's because she's unusual. In the attic, the couple explains that they wanted to scare them, so her family leaves the house. On the next day, Lydia tries to convince Delia about the ghosts, but Delia refuses to listen as she's busy preparing dinner for their guests tonight. Adam checks the handbook for other ideas when the model's cemetery lights up. Barbara wonders if it's Betel Jose, and Adam encourages her to repeat his name. After she says it the third time, they're transported into the small cemetery. The coffin begins shaking, and Betelgeuse comes out. The couple runs away, but Betelgeuse flies and blocks their way. The man annoys the couple until Barbara tells him that they just want people out of their house. Betelgeuse insists on making a deal with them. Barbara yells home three times, and finally they're out of the model. Betelgeuse gets angry. That evening, the family shared dinner with their guests, including Otho, who talks about the paranormal. This prompts Lydia to announce that she'd seen the ghosts in the house. Suddenly their shrimp cocktails turn into hands that reach out and grab their faces before pushing them off their chairs. Adam and Barbara rush to the attic, excited about their successful performance. They check the window, expecting the guests to run out of fear, but nobody comes out. Instead, Lydia tells them that the adults want to meet them. Downstairs, Lydia announces that the Maitlands refuse to join them and the guests leave. Delia marches up the attic to speak to the ghosts. The door opens, letting them inside, but Adam and Barbara aren't there. Charlie takes an interest in the model town while Otho takes the handbook. Heading down the steps, Delia's hand slides on the banister, then hears a rattling of the snake. Delia looks down and sees the fence turn into a snake's body that looms over them with a demonic face. The demon snake terrifies Delia and pushes Otho down the steps. It turns its head to Charlie and dangles him by the leg. The frightened Lydia begs for it to stop. The snake drops Charlie to the floor and comes after Lydia, but Barbara finds them just in time. She calls Betelgeuse's name three times, forcing him away. Adam and Barbara find Betelgeuse in the model town, confronting him for what he did to the family. Betelgeuse wonders about Lydia. Suddenly, a demonic bar appears in the model town, filled with ladies. Betelgeuse happily goes in as Adam and Barbara are summoned to Juno's office. Juno berates them for getting themselves photographed, releasing Betelgeuse, and letting Otho steal the handbook. Juno explains that they cannot let the living have proof of life after death. Back at the house, Charlie and Delia dread their meeting with Max. Otho, however, is confident, claiming to be an expert on the supernatural. Juno pressures the couple to get rid of the family. The couple warps their faces into monstrous forms. Lydia searches for the ghosts. She hears Betelgeuse from the model town, asking her to say his name to summon him. Lydia refuses to say it for the third time, realizing that he's the snake from earlier. Adam and Barbara walk back into the attic just as Lydia is about to repeat Betelgeuse. They stop her, but seeing their monstrous forms, Lydia gets scared. Barbara changes back to her human face. The couple comforts her, promising that they'll accept her family so she can visit them whenever she wants. Their conversation is interrupted when Charlie and Otho storm in, carrying the model town out of the attic. Delia diverts the attention to Otho, who reveals that he has the handbook. Otho asks for the ghost's personal belongings and Delia gets an idea. Later that night, Otho leads a seance with the Maitland's wedding clothes on the table. Otho chants a spell, making the lights go out and thunder raging outside. Barbara first appears in her dress, but her body rots quickly. Adam appears in his wedding suit, holding Barbara's hand, but her fingers deteriorate in his touch. Lydia begs them to stop, seeing that the Maitlands are dying, but Otho has finished the spell. Lydia runs to ask Betelgeuse for help. He tells Lydia that he can help, but she must agree to marry him to stay in the living world. Lydia summons Betelgeuse. The model starts to shake, revealing a full-sized Betelgeuse. But Betelgeuse slams the hammer down, launching the couple into the ceiling. Betelgeuse releases the Maitlands from the spell. Lydia goes to her parents. Betelgeuse puts snakes on Charlie's hand as dowry, and changes into a purple wedding suit. He turns to Lydia, wearing a red wedding dress. He summons her as he prepares the ceremony for their union. A small creature appears to officiate the wedding. Betelgeuse stops it from saying his name, but lets the ceremony proceed. With their strength returned, Adam says Betelgeuse's name. 
but his teeth snap off. The dismembered mouth attempts to say the name, and Betelgeuse stomps it away. He sends Adam into the model town, leaving Barbara to say his name, but Betelgeuse shuts her mouth. Adam gets in the model truck. Betelgeuse sends Barbara to the supernatural desert before putting a ring on Lydia's finger. Adam crashes the model truck onto Betelgeuse's shoes to distract him. The ceiling breaks, revealing Barbara, now in control of the sandworm. The sandworm devours Betelgeuse before plunging into the floor. Months have passed. Lydia happily returns to the house and reveals she got excellent grades. Charlie smiles, knowing that Lydia did well. Meanwhile, Betelgeuse is stuck in the afterlife waiting room. 